What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to Krieg's Corner. I'm your host, Adam Krieger. Today, I am joined by Max Murphy. He's an intern, part of this new intern class of Vendetta. I had Chris on last week. I had to give Max a shine. Uh, Max, how you doing? Doing great. Thanks for having me here. Excited. Let's do it. Yes. Honestly, my first introduction to you was outside of like I'm coordinating the timesheets. I'm doing like the kind of the clerical work for the internship this uh, this semester. But you were on the Vendetta Survivor. That was your first week. That was a uh, what a that, fucking week to introduce yourself to this to the company, huh? <laughs> yeah, that was a interesting experience. I don't think I've ever had a a work experience like that but uh you probably never will if, if i had to guess yeah. <laughs> you probably will never have a real work experience like that unless you stay here and then that will probably happen frequently even though you know you guys kind of like we're joking about it when you're when you're recording um and me and trey joked, joked about it after i was like how long do you think we do in episode two and you know we're two weeks i think we're two weeks since that day we recorded and it hasn't happened yet so that's good very good i if mean if it happens again i'll, I'll vote but God, I hope that doesn't happen again. Dude, I, I, I don't. I, I don't know if I feel bad for you, or I, I definitely feel about, felt bad for the situation that you got put into because literally you just threw a name out there, and that that whatever, that's a different story. But even even just from there, like now you have a target on your back, and it wasn't even you, you didn't even know what you were walking into. But you, listen, your vote probably motivated that kid to do better, and he was on the chopping block. Now he's not. So there you go. Shout out Jeremy Rinaldi um so it's been a kind of eventful actually before we get to that tell tell me a little bit about tell me a little bit about yourself tell me you know my listeners a little bit about yourself where you're from your school your fandom all that type of shit uh so born and raised in boston uh like not boston 20 minutes south of boston a uh, little town called marshfield massachusetts uh been a patriots celtics bruins fan my whole life um, fucking fuck boston mm. Hey, I fuck New York as well. I just got to put that out there. Um, I go to school in uh, Elon University in North Carolina. Uh, that's pretty much it. I thought I was going to go into finance, but that 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 ended very quickly. And then uh, found the how, vendor. How long ago did that end? Like, did that end, like, after? Oh, I, like, did, was that, like, a short live? Like, that was a March 2020 thing? Like, oh, I'm going to go day trade? And then, oh, this, that, like, like I that? went. I went into college thinking I wanted to be like a financial analyst and I, I think I got through like three months of it. What grade I, are you? What grade? I'm a junior or I'm going to be a senior next year, actually. A senior. Yeah. Oh, but, sure uh, song. Yeah. But like three months into my freshman year, I was just like, I, I can't handle this shit anymore. And then gone to sport management, found Vendetta and the rest is history. As someone, this is not, I did not plan on talking about this, but so the last year, like the pandemic, when you're, you're obviously in the middle of school, were you, did you stay in North Carolina? Were you home? What was, what was your situation like? We got sent home, like right when the, right when Corona, like, the like point, March, 2020. Yeah. We got sent home for spring break. I was like, all right, I'm gonna be home for two weeks and then go back to school. And then just ended up, and, I mean, every, everyone knows what happened, but I, uh, yeah, I just, Went home and had the longest spring break of my entire life. Right. And then, so, but for this year, did Elon have you guys back? I know it was oh, like yeah. Yeah. Lineup, we were, so. Uh, yeah. So first semester we had like a mostly online classes and then kind of around like December, January. I mean, the people down the stuff, they just don't give a shit about anything. Yeah, like, I, It's a different world. Out of them. That's why I'm asking because I, I want to know like, what it's like for you, because I'm curious. Yeah, so like around like December, January, I mean, we still do wear masks everywhere, but like it, it seemed like all the administration just kind of, they just kind of like not forget it, not forgot about it, but it de everything definitely became more lax. And I mean, mm -hmm. the second semester was was basically completely normal. So you like it? You were like in school. And I was just like, if so, that f first semester where you were all online, where you did you go down to North Carolina though, like live in a house down there? Yeah, I had like a little apartment. So. so did you love it? Did you like love it college more or where would you have wished you were in class? Because you, you had to experience both. So I'm, I'm curious. Not, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm a fan of the online classes. Like you are. I mean, like just just rolling over in bed, signing into class and just listening was like the greatest thing ever. I'm not going to lie. But do, do you, you you're actually like genuinely learning shit or no? I mean, 
Because co- we, I don't know how you feel about this. I know college. I my personal experience, college is a joke. It's just a piece of paper. And so what you're doing in there doesn't really matter. But like, I've noticed like there's leg- like I still I have some classes that I've taken my school that actually do like help me. Like I took a video editing class, so I learned how to use Final Cut and shit like that. So there are obviously helpful parts, but that was all taken pre-pandemic. Everything I'm taking at home, but like, so my school I go to like a small Catholic school, so they kind of didn't really give a shit either. But we because it's New York, they had to give a shit. So we were, in, they made us come back to school and then, but we had to wear masks everywhere. And I, I mean, I definitely did better when I was sitting in class, but I didn't like go, to, I don't go to school to socialize or like I, I commute. So for me, I would have much rather been online, but like, for, I don't know about for, like the party and like the social aspect. If you're down there, like you have an apartment to yourself, like you're not with your parents. Like, I don't know how old you, like you're 21 or no. 21, yeah. you, okay. So like you had probably had like one of the best years of your life. It was, it was, essentially normal besides the online classes right? especially being down in north carolina that's nice like the amount of people who just don't give a shit about like i'd you go into walmart and there'd be like a family of 10 and it's like mm. no mask no nothing just like shopping doing the regular thing and it was it's just kind of like a, a cultural just like i don't know just a huge I, difference from from yeah. being in boston going out in north carolina i kind of did the same thing fresh out of school um i went down to coastal carolina for a year and obviously that was pre-pandemic i don't know if you've, i don't know if you've heard about coastal you, you oh, i've heard some stuff yeah. <laughs> yeah so i went for a year i didn't make it past the year um but even just like the culture shock home from the northeast down there it's just like it's a whole new world i don't know what elon's like if it's a lot of like northeast kids that are going down to because i know elon's a pretty nice school massachusetts is like the second behind north carolina like most yeah, exactly so like you hang out with all kids from like the northeast right pretty you know, much one of my, one of my roommates uh, freshman year like back in massachusetts lives like 15 minutes away from me yeah yeah exactly so i it's it's probably you probably, literally you guys are all just on spring break for four years yeah. sounds nice yeah essentially it's literally in the middle the only bad thing I, it's it's in the middle of nowhere like the school it's literally just a school and then like a probably town. 40 minutes away from duke yeah 35 minutes away from wake forest it's Outside of Elon, though, is an absolute shithole. Like, it's... but Elon's beautiful. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Elon's Elon's an incredible school. <laughs> All right, that was our Elon talk. Um, I do want to get into the sports a little bit. You've had a we've had a really super, you know, eventful last few weeks in sports. Um, especially for New York and um Boston. Boston is not that new for New York. It's super unfamiliar. I personally don't give a flying fuck about the Knicks. Um. I don't know if you got that from last time. Chris and I talked about it. It's a hundred. If you're a four seed and you're, a, you get a bounce first round, it's an L on you. So like, I, I, I don't really care about that. I do want to talk about the Celtics a little bit because of everything that's happened since they last lost. Um, they got gentlemen swept by the, by the nets. Uh, Can't nothing. do anything about that. I mean, I'm, I'm honestly surprised they got a game. Um, I mean, no Jalen Brown no Kemba for three games of the series. I mean, I expected to get swept and not any of the games to be close. So we got one. So, I mean, but it feels like, to be honest, that doesn't even matter anymore because of what ha- the most recent oh, yeah. years. like, so like I, when we're talking about the Celtics, that's like the third thought on my list. It was, it's Brad Stevens becoming the new president of basketball operations, Danny Ainge going in God knows where they say he's leave. They say he's retiring. I think, I think he's going to Utah. I don't I, like, I don't, think BYU, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think he's done. I, I yeah. can't see him being done. So give me give me your thoughts on Brad Stevens as a coach and now what what do you think of him as going to be a president of basketball operations? What is that going to be like? I like I mean I love coach Stevens. Um, three conference finals in the 7 years he was there. I mean pretty pretty hard to get to the finals when LeBron's in the East, but um right. I'm excited because I mean Brad has been around the players for the past eight years especially Jason and Jalen Brown so he knows what compliments them well um I don't it just his demeanor though I don't know if he's like I don't know if he has that aggressive like go get it mindset I'm just but I'm excited I'm excited to see what's going on I just can't believe that was like the next move for him yeah like I didn't see I thought that it's like there was no pressure for him to be fired like what's was, did you think Danny Ainge was going to leave? Like, was there any, was there a thought of this, any of this in your head or no? When we lost the Nets, I was just like, all right, let's run it back next season. And then like next morning woke up, Brad Stevens is moving up and Danny Ainge is out. And I was just like, holy shit. Like 
it was just kind of just like like we just lost a series we weren't supposed to win and like i don't know and then they just blew the whole thing up like essentially i i, I wonder who they're gonna come get to coach um, that is the that's the biggest that like i but like, yeah. i just can't also, just like being the next coach there is gonna is gonna be a horrible job because you know that a great coach is lurking above you. Like he was fully capable of still coaching the NBA. So the reason why he's not coaching to me is I'm a little bit curious. There's I feel like there has to be something uh, something else going on, right? Or he said like I think he's like whatever. Once the news got released, he said he's been like burnt out of coaching since the bubble. Which, which I'm like, if he was burnt out after the bubble, what, like, why go through a whole season of being burnt out of coach? But I, I don't know. But it was definitely so, weird. Like, I didn't weird thing to hear. I didn't expect it. I expected him to be the coach for like another four or five years. Honestly, I, I can't. I, I woke up and I just couldn't. I thought I was reading something that was, I thought it had like an onion article or just like it was no. something, something wasn't right because for some reason, like the major like news outlets outside of like the Sh- a Shams tweet, I think I didn't really see it else on my timeline. And I thought maybe because even though I'm not an NBA guy, like NBA news still, of course, comes across my Twitter, Twitter feed, but that was kind of just slow to get there. And it was just a wild, wild thing to wake up to after yeah. she got sent home. But, but yeah, a bunch of my friends from Massachusetts just started texting like in a group chat. They were just like, holy shit, what just happened? And I was, uh, news broke at like 9.30 in the morning. So I mean, like, just woke up to a bunch of texts and I was just like, what what happened? Such an awkward press conference too. They're all just like sitting there and like you could tell, clearly tell Danny Age is like yeah. not uh, not happy with the arrangement, but he just has to sit there and be a fucking, <laughs> yeah, just literally just be like an eyeball punching bag for all these people in the stands. All right. Bruins, I know, are kind of like the lowest team on your list, huh? Yeah, I mean, I hate to say it, but I don't really follow the regular season. But once they get in the playoffs, I'm the biggest Bruins fan you'll find. <laughs> I respect that though, because you're not. I don't. I don't see you like it's not like you're in the NHL ch- like ch- chat pretending to be. You just, just you enjoy watching the Bruins and have a good time. But do so you think they're gonna think they're gonna beat the Islanders or what? I don't. That was such a tough loss last game. Like. It's been a great series to watch. They play tonight. Series, yeah. Um, like I, when they were down three one, I like me and my dad almost just like turned it off, went to bed, and then what was it? I think it was Bergeron scored, and then Marchand scored, and I was like, okay, I gotta now, sleep like, now. Yeah, I gotta <laughs> stay down for this. And then just the way that they lo- like pass off the skate right at the blue line, and then he takes it down for a breakaway goal. It was just like a sucky way to lose. Like I just got nothing else to say about that. <laughs> It's gonna be a great series. All the games have been really no, fun to watch. You know, um, my Hurricanes are not looking too good down down o two right now. So hopefully we get a comeback win tonight. Uh, so this this will be out Friday. This is uh usually say it's a little bit early in the show, but it's Thursday, June third again. Joined by Max Murphy, one of the new interns here. He's a Boston guy, so we automatically kind of come at each other uh we both i literally logged in the zoom i was like the first thing i said to him was like other than thank you i was like you're a really fucking boston guy huh <laughs> but uh it's kind of just what it is all right into like kind of the real deal meat and potatoes of this the patriots yep. this you said that they're your number one i really really hate the patriots as a jets fan just losing them twice a year for the last I don't know, 25 plus years has been, the, yeah, like my entire lifetime pretty much. It's been miserable, but there's a kind of a, for some reason, it seems like the playing field is a little bit more even. Obviously, Bill Belichick is still the best coach of all time, so they always will have a leg up on anyone. They both have brand new quarterbacks um, they drafted this year. What What is the future for the New England Patriots at quarterback? Is it Cam or is it Mac Jones? I like last year. I think Cam, I think Cam earned his his right to get like even though he played like shit. Like he clearly think Cam earned his right to play again. Yeah, I I mean I, I know he played like shit, but I mean like he clearly bought in Belichick and McDaniel's. Obviously, like the guy they brought him back. Like I would lo- I would love to see Cam Newton just go out there and throw like I don't know 25, 30 touchdowns to this, to this new group of tight ends. But I mean. I'm excited for Mac. I'm also a little nervous just because, I mean, the kid is from Florida, went to Alabama, and now he has to go play in New England. I just, 
I'm wor- and he doesn't. He clearly doesn't have the strongest arm. So I mean, I do have some questions, but uh, I'm I'm very excited for this football season. Last year, I, I don't want to talk about last year. Why is he wearing fifty in like OTAs? Be- Belichick makes he makes all the rookies wear like number f- fifty through like whatever it is fifty eight, and he makes them like earn their number. But um, he they never drafted a quarterback in the first round, so like it was always like a like an offensive lineman wearing so no, 50. So no one even noticed. Yeah, really. no one even like bad deny. And then Mac Jones is like wearing 50 and everyone like freaks out. It's, yeah. He only does it the first rounders or just all people? No, every room. Yeah. So like, okay. yeah, Christian Barmore, they took in the second round. Like he has 51 and then so on, like 52, 53. So weird thing to say, but. uh, Very, very weird seeing quarterback wear 50. Yeah. So are. You, what's the future? Are they going to win this year? How are they going to do? They're not obviously not going to go. They're not going to win the AFC East. We, we're, Bills are, I got to build our wagon. Like yeah, I, they're, they're I gotta too go, hard. I like Josh Allen too. They're a very likable team. Like, I I don't know. I'm torn. It's, I, it, it, really, it really are. It sucks to be in their division. I would love them to be in the AFC North or some shit and what, get to root for them over the fucking Ravens or the Bengals. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, having the Jets though, that I mean, that's two division wins a year, and I think, I think my, I think the, they always split with my. They can't win in late in the season, Miami. I don't get that, but uh, I don't believe in Tua either, so I'm not worried about the Dolphins. But the Bills, yeah, I'm already, I already marked that down zero two. So you don't believe in Tua, huh? I'm pretty sure that's uh, the Adam Ramirez like infamous hill that he dies on. The guy who was cut in the first round of Survivor rip. I just like every time Fitzpatrick came in last year, that offense was like like humming. And then two were like, I, I don't, I just, I don't think his arm is special. I don't think he's overly athletic. I have a lot of questions, but uh, I don't know. He gave him Jalen Waddle, Will Fuller. We'll see. So who's gonna be the better quarterback, Zach Wilson or Mac Jones? I gotta say, I can't, I can't choose against my. I gotta say Mac Jones, but. I did watch that. Like that, that kid is fun to watch. I mean, watching some of his BYU highlights, like he's fun to watch. I just going from BYU to playing in New York. I don't think people are taking that into like the best team he played last year was Coastal Carolina, and And he lost. lost. He didn't throw the ball into the end zone on the last play. I don't understand. Lost. And now you're telling me he's supposed to go to the dysfunctional Jets who haven't been good in 20 years. So, okay. So, yes, that, that's obviously the issue is that the Jets suck, and they're always going to suck. And no matter who they drafted, they were going to suck. Unless somehow they were going to somehow get the number one pick. Trevor Lawrence is absolutely a franchise-altering player. So, things would be a lot different. They wouldn't have hired Robert Salah. They had the number one overall pick, probably. Like, probably not. they would have they gotten offensive coach, and things they would have tried to do things differently. However... So to answer my question that I asked you about the Jones or Wilson, I think I have to go with Mac Jones too, just because Bill Belichick, Patriots versus first time head coach, defensive head coach, New York, New York Jets. Right. Yeah. And it's we've seen the defensive coaches with the uh, with our rookie quarterbacks before. We just did it with Sam Darnold and Todd Bowles like four years ago. Shit is just like it's just the Jets. They're I'm a loser organization. I'm a, I'm a loser fans. Like I'm a Mets Jets fan. Like what my life. Even though the Mets though, the Mets. I, I will say I like I'll give Joe Douglas and uh, that front office credit. I, I think they've given Zach Wilson more help than they ever gave Sam Darnold in like three months. So I mean I'll give him that. I mean, but they draft the traded up to get Vera Tucker. Love that pick. Uh, Elijah Moore. Yeah. I like that pick as well. Um, Corey Davis and Corey Davis. So, I mean, like Sam, I, I felt so bad for it. Like they gave him nothing and Adam Gase is in your deal. True. I, I actually did want to bring this up with you because I'm actually going to use this in this some segue to something else, but you've been writing a lot on the site. Um, most recently, you've been cranking out the the PLL, the Premier Lacrosse League previews. You, you enjoy doing those or no? I, I do. I mean, I, I play lacrosse my whole do, life. Do you watch the Premier League like actually or like you, you're casual? No, yeah, well, yeah. Like this weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'll sit down and watch the majority of the games. Like I'm that way with college wrestling, and like I don't know, have you been checking out the views? Do you know how to look at the views and shit? Like, do you see how they're performing or no? I don't know how to do that. No, because no. usually those niche sports and stuff like that, they, they get they get good views, so that's always always good stuff to write about. And yeah. I mean, 
you've just been writing a lot, so that and it's really good. People definitely know, are been noticing. Yeah, I I definitely like college lacrosse more than I mean the the, the pro lacrosse game college is- lacrosse national championship was incredible. My sister goes to Maryland, so I, I had I was pretty uh, you know, slightly yeah. invested. We have a few Maryland people here too, so I did like just seeing like a bunch of like large like big media people tweet about that game like big cat was watching it like field yates i think said something about it it just like made me happy that lacrosse was getting some recognition i mean it's, it's, a a, it's the same thing with wrestling now we're, we're they're in very similar boats where like they need to do something to get to the next level i mean lacrosse there is no olympics or world championships as far as i know not really there's right? like a there's like a it's an, uh, I forget what it's called but there is like a us there's like a usa canada team that they play like every four years, so I think they'll play twenty twenty two. Okay, yeah. So there, there needs to be like some sort of more way to keep like these niche sports and profitable and make them like have a senior level circuit because like the Premier League does a great job. I know that's a Rabel thing. He, dude, Ra- Paul Rabel used to. Uh, he's a New York guy, I'm pretty sure, and he was um or even if he's not a New York guy, he did a lot of like coaching and clinics up in New York and like pretty close to where I'm from, so. He played, played on like the he played on the uh, lizards, right? Lizards, yeah. Yeah. So like he was always running these clinics and shit because they make no money in that league. So they have they're literally are that's a third of or a fourth of their income, some of them. So yeah, Rabel's like I mean, I think Rabel is literally sponsored by every lacrosse company ever. So I mean he makes it by, but I think not like ninety eight right, percent of the guys in PL also the reason, the only reason I know Paul Rabel's name is because of it's Paul Rabel. Yeah. And, like right. he's sponsored by Red. Like no other lacrosse player will ever be sponsored by Red Bull. Like yeah, just- Red Bull. Red Bull loves to fucking sponsor everyone. Though. They love <laughs> to sponsor gamers. They do. They have their, they have their touch net. They have their hand at everything. Yeah. But um, yeah. So what do you like? Two questions before we kind of wrap this up. What do you see yourself doing? Like primarily, like do you see yourself as like a writer? Do you like to do? podcast like you want to do video stuff like what like what's been your what have you enjoyed doing the most you've kind of been in a little bit of everything now huh yeah uh i do like right i just like writing about stuff that i like to write about so i mean that's that's been good and i would like to to do podcasts maybe more but uh, that's something down the road but primarily focus on just writing right now and uh is that like something you're trying to do with your career you want to be like a sports writer or you want to like just, just, just like still, trying, still trying to feel it out you know yeah, just like anywhere in sports media. Or, I mean, right now, like, technically I'm going to school for sport management, like not even media or journalism. So, I mean, either like go, go like into facility management or like go down this, this media, uh, sports media course or path. So facility management shit's cool. I took a few classes on that uh, this year, actually. Yeah. Interesting. It's, just like just events and that type of stuff. Just, but, just, yeah. Just like seeing all the, like the behind the scenes stuff that goes into putting on events and in games is, is pretty interesting. I think I'm addicted to behind the scenes, just like seeing how shit works. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's cause I can't build shit with my hands or something, but like, I just want to know how shit like, like those little details behind shit. It's cool. Yeah, definitely. Uh, all right. Last question. Give me like, give me your thoughts on the site as a whole. What do you like, dislike the slack? Not, you know, do you, do you chop it up? Do you not chop it up? Kind of what you're, what you're uh, doing, like. I don't know. I, I kind of, I don't really like, uh, I, I see like Alex Chick and, and Garrett going back and forth like every day. And then the, the funny thing is, is like, they're like, they're literally like are in the same room each, with each other half the time. Like they're actually friends. Like they know each other outside okay. of this. Yes. Yeah, so like they were watching, they were watching like that Nuggets triple overtime game together. Oh, right. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, no, there, there was I mean, we still kind of go at it and trey's been a lot more vocal about like making friends and like trying to do shit like that because not uh, i've only been here for a minute but we've had definitely a big like change since people come in and going that that nba check gets gets going so i mean maybe i managed to start chiming in there but i don't know i think it, nfl chat is the one that's going to end up going crazy because, first uh, of all I'm, just because everyone loves nfl but yeah. i have i've never been here for an nfl season so i don't know what I'm excited. I, I literally got here like the the week before the Super Bowl, so okay, I, I missed out, but we'll see. I, I'm very excited for football. I'm excited for college football too. I wish I wasn't more into college. Like, what do you? Who's your college football team? Like, BC. like Boston College, like, uh, like the Red Bandana game. Yeah. 
I, like last year when they when they were like in Clemson and almost beat like that was like the best BC game I've ever won. But like I was at BC Louisville and Lamar Jackson had like eight touchdowns against it. That was just like even though BC lost like 50 to seven, like that was one of the most fun games I've ever been. And from that day on, I knew Lamar Jackson's going to be good. And Oh, I'll let Trey hear you say that. He hates Lamar. He, win, he wins 80% of his games. I mean, the throw, I mean, he is the most dynamic quarterback we've ever seen at the position side. He's a running back. He can't really throw. I don't know. You win 80% of your games. You have, you have my, uh, my vote of confidence. True. Can't win. Yeah, winning, winning solves all. All right, Max, what's your socials? Where can they follow you? You know, you can check him out on the site, obviously, with the Premier Lacrosse League stuff, and then click his name, find all of his other stuff there. But Twitter, Instagram, all that fun stuff. Twitter is MT underscore Murphy 18. And then my Instagram is just Max Murphy with, with two R's. So Max Murphy, two R's. All right, Max. Uh, I appreciate you coming on. It's been on short notice. Uh, thanks for listening, everyone. Creek's Corner.